So, good morning, everybody. <coughs> Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I would like to welcome you for the first talk. My name is Ove Kehler. I'm uh, working in operations at Brill. Um, and this morning, I want to take you on a journey into the world of a publisher with a broad diversity of uh, content and content types. I'm not here by myself. Um, there are two colleagues here as well. Um, Albert Schoenmaker, will you stand up? Um, senior Product Manager, Platforms and Data at Brill, and Imre Sevenhausen, uh, Data Processing Manager. Not sure whether Sam is there. Well, you know Sam, I guess, at STM. A brief overview about uh, Brill. Um, Brill was founded in 1683 in Leiden in the Netherlands, where uh, still our headquarters is located, next to offices in Boston and Singapore. We have 130 staff, and we are publishing in selected areas of the humanities, social sciences, and international law. In total, indeed, 140 databases, but also 240 journals. There is also still a lot happening in journal publishing at Brill, next to many book series. There's a strong tradition at Brill in uh, diversity, and that is with two drivers. First of all, subject areas that involve non-Latin characters. For example, Middle East and Islamic studies. As early as 1730, Brill published its first Arabic manuscript, and later also Brill added other exotic subject areas such as Asian studies, classical studies, religious studies, linguistics to our publishing uh, portfolio, next to many other fields in the humanities. On the right-hand side of this picture, um, uh, you see um, a scene from the Frankfurt Book Fair, 1960, which says in German, I read it out, we, are, we, are drucken und verlegen in allen Sprachen der Welt. we print and publish in all languages of the world. That was, and still is, to some extent, one of our key competitive advantages um, in publishing. Another uh, driver of diversity at Brill um, concerns the uh, variety of content types, and that's to some extent related to the earlier mentioned variety in terms of languages. Um, so there are many different content types, and you see some highlights um, also going very back in history, including 1890, the first preparations of the Encyclopedia of Islam, and 1990s, we start to be the leading publisher of research around the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is quite relevant for the interpretation of early Christianity. So this slide aims to illustrate how much different those special publications are from journals in a variety of ways. Let's take the Encyclopedia of Islam that I just mentioned before. By now, Brill has been publishing three editions of this leading reference work in this specific field, which you also see on this slide. While the oldest edition started publishing more than 100 years ago, the most recent one published its first volume only in 2007. Since 2006, the Encyclopedia of Islam has been online, but first it had its own platform, and now all three editions are on Brill's overall reference works platform. You might wonder why all three? One and two must be outdated. Well, because by now the first edition is not just a reference work, but it's also a key to the past understanding of the um, Islamic world. And that's actually, by the way, the very nature of the humanities. It's not only about facts and discoveries, it is even more so about discourse and interpretation um, of those facts. Um, technically speaking, the uh, Encyclopedia of Islam illustrates the complexity of publishing such a reference work. Um, one of the biggest challenges is to manage the uh, um, content inflow from a multitude of authors uh, which has high requirements in terms of making the input more consistent. Another um, uh, Brill encyclopedias, they might not have new editions like this one, but they still get updates of outdated entries. Also, in some cases, new articles are being added to the original product. And this is, this can be a challenge in terms of the business model, who is going to pay for that new, newly added content, and also of version control. Last not least, entries in reference work A, can be very much different from entries in reference work B in terms of the structure. So how much more simple is a journal? In terms of structure, an article from journal A does in principle not differ from an article in journal B. In terms of context, an article is standalone. It does not have to fit in the context of a monograph like a chapter or an encyclopedia, and a platform doesn't have to illustrate that. 
Also, an article does not have to be harmonized in terms of consistency with other articles. And in terms of content, all parts of a journal are in principle of interest in a search, while some parts of books are clearly not of great interest. And that's it, simple. No wonder why the first journal websites appeared even before Google existed, like Highwire in 1995. And also our Brill journals were online in 1999 uh, on Agenda. Um, at Brill we sometimes say that journal articles, and to some extent also book chapters, follow standards and are hence a commodity in a um, structure sense, while most reference works are a speciality and require a customer solution. Nobody would ever argue that each journal needs its own platform, but there were times at Brill where each specialty database, such as the Encyclopedia of Islam, had its own platform with its own specs, and some of them really deserved it. As a consequence, we feel that these different content types, although published in the same subject areas and written by the same scholars, are almost living different lives within Brill, like in a parallel universe. So this is a sort of introduction um, um, into the variety of content types. Here you see uh, the list of more than 5,700 uh, products, journals, e-books, but also others, which I will um, get into a little bit later. The question of this talk is now how to organize this diversity in the digital world. But wait, why do we need to organize this diversity at all? Is not Google finding all our products? Well, there are three things to say about this. First of all, not all usage is coming from Google, obviously. You will also recognize a big part, but not all. And even if it was, we would still, as Brill, try stimulating users to search within the Brill universe of content to further increase usage. And that is for the benefits of the scholars themselves, but clearly also for our own benefit in terms of renewals and new sales. Secondly, we also need to find a commercial balance between the one extreme, squeezing all similar products into one environment with one set of features that could lead to a loss of value in some cases, and the other extreme of having one plat platform per product, which would clearly not be cost effective. And uh, last but not least, librarians that are our paying customers, the buyers, like to obtain an easy overview of all our online resources. Also, that requires a certain level of organization. And overall speaking, you could say that these are the three objectives of organizing diversity. User experience, commercial wisdom, and focus on the buyer. And I'll get back to that a little bit later. Now, how to organize diversity? We could um, do it based on subject areas, but then there are resources that belong to several subject areas, with a negative consequence that we would have to um, host the same resource at several platforms. Another reason that speaks against subject area silos would be that scholars prefer cross-discipline searching, with a negative consequence that there would not be search results from related fields. Instead, there are strong reasons to organize resources by content type. Content types serve different purposes in the scholarly workflow. Also, it helps a scholar to know which content type he or she is looking at. Uh, secondly, there are, um, there are differences in uh, terms of content structure and functionalities, obviously. And at Brill, we also have different business models for different content types, which also um, uh, are reason to um, treat them apart. So, as a consequence, Brill has decided to organize our online resources by content type. This was um, also confirmed by user studies that we did at the time when we de decided it five years ago. And over the last five years, we have uh, launched five content type-based platforms, by the way, with different vendors, so we have a multi-vendor approach. The Books and Journals platform is with Publishing Technology. The Reference Works platform um, and Bibliographies and Primary Sources are with Semantico and Dictionaries platform are with Impressi, a small company based in the Netherlands. I will now introduce you to each platform based on a fictitious research question that will lead us through each of them. A very typical field of study for Brill customers is the history of the Islamic world. Quite an interesting topic also with regards to the current news. 
Remember, some centuries back, um, it was the Islamic world that was much more advanced than Europe in terms of culture, literature, technology, etc. And a very interesting time in that respect is the beginning of the early modern period, when Europe started to wake up after the Middle Ages. Did you know that already then there were many Western translations and editions of the Quran at that time? So let's start with the original material. For that I go to the primary sources platform, which gives access to scanned version of archival documents. In terms of the business model, access can be purchased by collection. There's no way to access uh, only single documents or to purchase access to the entire platform. Say, through my library, I have access to the collection Early Western Qurans Online. There I find this edition, published in Leiden in 1691, with an introduction that gives me insight into the way how the Quran was explained to a European audience more than 300 years ago. A key functionality for studying primary sources is a good viewer that allows zooming in and out, which you see on this screenshot. Another important functionality is the um, uh, capability to search, to have two different searches, basically. To search either specifically through the metadata, like, for instance, to find this Quran from 1691, versus searching through the full text of the actual entries of the documents, the respective sources, if they are OCR'd. There's one interesting caveat here, and um, uh, our original thinking was that it is always useful if scholars can search through all resources on one platform simultaneously. However, with the primary sources, this can also be a problem. If you are interested in, say, the disclosed documents from the CIA during the Cold War, which is a Brill primary source collection, you might not want to see in your results list documents from the Reformation period in the 17th century, which we also have, just because they uh, match the same search query. So this is a challenge. After studying the um, original material, I want to find related secondary literature on the topic of Quran translations and perception of the Quran in the early modern period. One way of doing this is to use a, um, a so-called bibliography, or more modern speaking, abstracting index, the indexing database. So we have the bibliographies platform with the business models that differ slightly that you can purchase either access to one of the eight bibliographies on that platform or to the entire platform. One special functionality concerns the need with bibliographies to not display results for non-subscribers because this would, in fact, give away the product. The results are the product. While for journals and books and reference works, we do show the high-level results and also to non-subscribers without giving away the entire product. We just trigger them to maybe purchase access to the product. So this is a, a specialty with the bibliographies platform. Brill's best-selling single online resource overall is the Index Islamicus, a bibliography um, in this uh, subject area, which is also, by the way, licensed to external aggregator platforms such as EBSCO Host. Now imagine I find a very interesting monograph through this bibliography and this monograph is located on Brill's Books and Journals platform. The title is European Quran Translations, 1500 to 1700. Brill's Books and Journals platform generates most usage and revenue out of all platforms. In terms of business models and access management, this platform offers the widest variety. For journals, we offer access based on subscription, uh, collections and archives, for monographs, um, also in terms of collections, but we also have a pick and choose and a patron-driven acquisition model, PDA. And for individual users, we uh, obviously allow um, single item purchases, pay-per-view of articles and chapters. Before the platform launched, Brill had books and journals on different places. Journals were on Ingenta Connect and books on our own home-built platform. Brill decided that it makes sense to offer books and journals on the same platform for three main reasons. Articles and, books, uh, articles and book chapters have a similar content structure. They are being read in similar ways, and they serve a similar purpose in the scholarly workflow. But there are differences. Journals are being searched. Books are being browsed. Journals consist of standalone art items, 
I mentioned that before, well, books consist of items that form one bigger unit, and in this um, context, I would like to quote John Sack, with his permission, who earlier wrote a comment in the Scholarly Kitchen this year, uh, which I very much liked. Articles sum up to issues more easily than books decompose into chapters. There can be narrative arguments from chapter to chapter that get lost. So that's a challenge to be reflected on a good platform that has books and journals. Most, most books at Brill are also part of book series, which is even a bigger unit um, and also needs to be reflected in some way or the other. And then there are sub-series to make it even more complicated. Obviously for books, you might also want to have a good reader. Um, books, let's not forget that folks, still sell in print. So there might be the need to have a link to the web shop, also to buy print books. And journals, um, on the other hand, need um, something journal specific, a table of content alert. Again, a journal specific functionality of the platform. Now, we get back to our journey. We read in these monographs that in the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire was at the peak of its power and the Battle of Lepanto in 1571 was a turning point in that respect. Imagine we now want to find out more about this key event. We would use an encyclopedia, wouldn't we? So we go to the ReferenceWorks platform of Brill, where many of our encyclopedias are hosted. Um, well, for many topics you could use Wikipedia. Scholars, at least in our target markets, often still value works that are being edit edited by top researchers in their respective fields, because those encyclopedias give really an authoritative overview in a defined subfield. A search for Lepanto, which was the starting point, generates results from a number of reference works, including, not surprisingly, the Encyclopedia of Islam, one, two, and three, we also have an encyclopedia of Jews in the Islamic world, and there's the encyclopedia of Christian-Muslim relations that I might have not heard before. So this is a very interesting um, finding. This shows the benefit of cross-searching through works of different subject areas. Still, there are reference works that don't easily fit into a platform with only one set of functionality. For example, a reference edition of the Dead Sea Scrolls required displaying the Hebrew text in a different color than the English translation. So that's something that was really specific to that particular publication. Now, in the entry of this reference work, I might find an Arabic term that I would like to explore further. And for this, I would make use of a historical dictionary. So, I go to the dictionary of Quranic usage, for instance, um, a very important work in that respect. Interestingly, this one, is on the ReferenceWorks platform. Well, we do have a dedicated platform for dictionaries. So, why is that? I guess the reasons for placing the Quran dictionary there is to be close to related resources in the same field and because it does in fact have a similar structure like an encyclopedia. On the other hand, one could argue that all dictionaries are in fact reference works. But then similarly, some people consider reference works books, which is also true. That's why some books are on the reference works platform as well. And you will not be surprised to hear, there are reference works which are on the books platform. In other words, there is certainly a lot to say about organization, uh, organizing publications by content type, and it does indeed solve some problems, but it can also create new problems. One of them is that the whole concept of content types is arbitrary to start with. That was definitely a finding of our journey with launching all these platforms. The result is that users sometimes have a hard time to find the resource because they go to the wrong platform. Next to realizing how arbitrary the division in content silos is, we also notice that there's certainly no natural sequence of using particular content types in a certain row, as we had earlier suggested in our fictitious research question. In fact, they are all used simultaneously. So, sorry, just a second. I'm, I'm coming to the uh, interesting point of the presentation, the conclusion of the presentation, almost, which I would start by a recap of how we currently present Brill's online resources. The key element are the five content type-based platforms that I mentioned before. The main benefit is it's a cost-effective way 
of combining products of different content structure, technical requirements, and um, uh, business models. Of, sorry, similar content structure, technical requirements, and business models. But we've shown there are challenges. Challenge one is we just showed that the division of online resource by content type is arbitrary by definition. So we, as Brill, don't necessarily always know on which platform to put which resource, let alone that users would know. Challenge number two is that cross-discipline searching can have a negative effect, as we saw with the primary sources. To generate more cross-searching um, across platforms, we launched a linking hub called the Brill Online Discovery. This linking hub proved to be very useful because we built it into the respective platforms and allowed people to see results from the respectively other platforms. However, as a starting point into research, uh, we saw that it is not really very much used. So in that sense, that's, um, that's a challenge if we want to drive usage to our platforms. Um, and, uh, so we, 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 we see that people don't make use of the main entry point of searching through all Brill online resources in that, in that hub. But then, is it really all Brill online resources? No, not really. Because for several reasons, there are still a number of products which have their own platform outside the content type platforms for licensing reasons or format reasons. Like recently, we announced the pending launch of a data journal, which is for instance, the yellow symbol. And the orange symbol could simplify some of our co-published reference works that are on standalone platforms. The challenge involves addressing the earlier mentioned tension between, on the one hand, the one size fits it all, and the other um, uh, hand, the other extreme, one platform for each product. To make it even more confusing, Brill also launched a subject-based platform, the uh, online uh, reference library, with some scholarly dictionaries around the Chinese language, which also involved the requirement to have Chinese characters displayed. Next to that, we plan to launch other subject-based platforms of a slightly different kind. Uh, one would be a permanent entry point to all Brill um, online content in a certain subject area, like Islamic studies, so that people find immediately all those resources. And another one could be a temporary marketing site, um, like ab about the recent 70th anniversary of the United Nations, where we published a lot of content and to let people find that content. So the challenge is really how to um, fit those subject-based platforms into the overall concept. And then there is, of course, our corporate website, brill.com with corporate information, job adverts, the CV of our managers, uh, but also a catalog of our uh, metadata for all products, including print, and a web shop for the print products. Uh, when people search Google for a particular Brill book, they get, by definition, two results from Brill. One on Brill.com, the metadata search result, and the other one from BrillOnline.com, the respective um, content platform. People just don't know where to click it, which is not very good in terms of user experience. In addition, there are results from external aggregators to whom we license selected products like EBSCOhost, which I leave a little bit outside the uh, consideration, but that's also part of how the outside world perceives our online product portfolio. So the challenge is, in this respect, how to streamline the Google results, um, uh, at least for Brill.com and BrillOnline.com. And last but not least, uh, we should help our um, uh, librarian customers to get an easy, comprehensive overview of all available resources uh, in a certain um, content type, which is, as you see on this slide, which is the current situation, quite confusing. To address these seven challenges, if you count it, we have seven, and I will list them on my last slide again, just for clarity, as recap. Uh, we are thinking about a slightly different approach, effectively consisting of seven different measures. The first measure is we would make the books and journals platform into the new linking hub that searches not only through books and journals, but also through all other products that are at other places. The advantage is that this is already now the platform with the highest number of Brill Online resources and the highest, number of, the highest usage, and therefore it has the highest chance of guiding people to other resources that are not immediately at this place. So this would address the challenge that users don't make use of the current main entry point for searching all 
online resources. A second measure would be we would stop call it the books and journals platform, but we would simply consider it the entry point to Brill content, period. Whereby the commodity products, books, journals, possibly some standard reference works are effectively hosted on that platform, while all the other specialty products are spread out over satellite platforms, which are being searched from the main platform as well. This would address the challenge that the division of uh, online resource by content type is arbitrary. We wouldn't make this the main criteria for organizing it anymore. So talking about those other satellite platforms, we should also stop considering those content type platforms. Instead, we would, could call them as a working title cluster platforms. The measure would be to stick all products together that don't fit on the main platform and where there is a business rationale for putting them on a shared satellite platform. For instance, they are similar in terms of their special content structure or for technical requirements or for subject reasons. This would also give a place to the subject-related platforms like the Chinese reference library that I mentioned earlier and also to the standalone platforms which could easily continue to exist in this um, scenario. It uh, might make sense to not put all similar products on one platform, uh, but even to make a split by subject area. For instance, for the primary sources that I mentioned now a couple of times, there won't be many scholars that would uh, search through collections of the CIA and from the early Reformation, so we could, although they would fit technically on the same platform, split those into two different places um, of, uh, of um, collections that belong together. And this would address another earlier men men uh, mentioned challenge. By the way, such subject-based groupings of primary sources come close to the subject portals that I also mentioned, but there are differences. What I was talking about earlier, the um, temporary portal for the 17th anniversary of the United Nations, or the subject portal for Islamic studies, could, uh, should function as derivatives or spin-offs of the main content platform. So this measure would address the challenge, how do those subject-based platforms fit into an overall architecture? And you can still explain it to people. The sixth measure would make uh, the corporate website and the catalog part of the same concept by letting them all fall under the domain brill.com. These three domains, catalog, content, and corporate, would or could become the concept of the three Cs around Brill.com. And BrillOnline.com in this scenario would cease to exist. I wonder though in how far we should not strive to actually incorporate the metadata catalog search into the actual content platform. This would then mean that the main content platform would need to allow also searching through print books and also to sell them through the webshop. Either way, this would mean a challenge, uh, progress on the challenge that I mentioned before to streamline the double structure of results from uh, brill.com and brillonline.com. And finally, measure number seven, right now the content type of a found product is reflected by the platform where it's hosted. So we go back to the objective with the buyer and making it easy for them to browse through our products. If a librarian right now wants to find all online dictionaries, they would intuitively I assume go to the dictionaries platform of Brill. But as I showed earlier, the list is misleading because it's not complete. So in this new situation where we stop having content type platforms, librarians could find lists with all resources of certain content types in an improved metadata catalog. If a product belongs to more than one content type, then it could show up in several lists because it's tagged with different content types. So imagine a user in this scenario uh, finds a reference work, finds the Encyclopedia of Islam. This would be presented with a tagline such as Encyclopedia of Islam, a Brill reference work. And then there would be a link next to it. Click here to find other Brill reference works. And this link would lead to the list of products that are tagged as a reference work in the catalog. So this would address the last challenge that I talked about, how to allow librarians to get an easy overview of all available online resources of a certain type. 
Now, this brings me almost to the end of the presentation, and I promised you to recap these very busy and a little bit complicated slides by displaying again the current situation, the proposed situation, and the challenges around them, and the way how we try to address those challenges. To make it easier, I will just read it out loud. <laughs> the first challenge was division by content type is arbitrary. The measure was stop thinking in terms of content types, instead create one main platform for commodity products with satellite platforms for custom products. Challenge number two, cross-discipline searching can do harm in certain cases. So split up certain satellite platforms by subject area, like the primary sources. Challenge number three, linking hub brillonline.com is not very heavily used. Measure would be to upgrade that main platform that I mentioned in challenge number one and make this into the new linking hub. Challenge number four, single product platforms are difficult to integrate. Measure would be to treat those just like any other satellite platforms in this new concept. Challenge number five, subject portals have no easy place in a platform architecture. So the idea would be to distinguish between subject portals as entry points on the level of the main platform and as re uh, resource libraries with actual online resources on them on the level of the satellite platforms. The uh, sixth challenge was Google shows uh, each product twice on brill.com and brillonline.com. The measure here would be to find a way to combine the catalog and the content and also possibly corporate under one roof which is better integrated. And challenge number seven, librarians need an easy overview of products so that they can buy them. <laughs> Link each product back to the complete product listing in an improved catalog. If you look at this list, all those challenges and measures can be related to either one of the objectives that I mentioned earlier. Achieve better um, user experience and increase usage, first one. Second one, apply commercial wisdom. And third one, focus on the buyer as well. Well, this brings me to the end of the presentation, um, to the end of this journey through the wondrous world of Brill and how we deal with the diversity of content types beyond journals. I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm open to take questions.